Warning, the host of this show may appear more sane and more alive than she really is. Beware of the quiet ones who like vampires. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, first uh, vampire book club meeting. As, and I'm sorry, I made, I made a promise that I was unable to keep to you all. Um, I promised that when the first episode came up, which is this, that I would have a list of the all the books for the next year, which would be 12 books, because one book a month. So, I was unable to do so. I've been really, really busy. I will try my best to, uh have the list for you, um, by next, next month, on the 13th, with, when the, uh, second episode of this lovely little vampire book club, uh, meets, so, can't wait till then, can ya? Okay, <laughs> so, let's get started, uh, Laws of the Blood, The Hunt. The f I finished this one a while ago. Um, and I've read the second one, and I'm about to start reading the third one, and there's five all together. So the first book, I, I like how they portray, portray vampires in this book, and, um, it's a unique, um, uh, take. I've, um, haven't heard this particular take on them in any other book I've read. The enforcers are basically like the police force of the vampire world, according to this book. As a vampire, you you feed on humans, and they actually feed on them, kind of munch on you, <laughs> like they eat some flesh. Um, they don't really show much of the vampire feeding; it's more of the enforcers feeding, and the enforcers feeding is really different. Um, basically, as a vampire, you feed on humans. As an enforcer you feed on other vampires. Basically, you know, every so often, someone, when you, when you break, when you, like, seriously break one of the laws, most of the laws are punishable by death. So the enforcer kills you and then, you know, eats you. Basically, there's a bad, uh, there's a vampire in here who breaks a law, I forget exactly what he did wrong, and our enforcer has to take him out, and then he packs, <laughs> and then he puts the leftovers, because he couldn't eat them all at once, <laughs> he puts the leftovers in his fridge, they stockpile, I guess, <laughs> I, I just like that part, he put the leftovers in the fridge, I just thought that was funny, okay, so basically, our, our boy here has to plan a hunt, while dealing with his relationship issues, while dealing with a f uh, an old friend of his who is a vampire, who is having some issues. Apparently he's at that stage where he's, um, trying to think of the right word here. I believe he, um, he's becoming an enforcer. He, apparently he was bitten by another enforcer, and so he's reaching that level where he's becoming an enforcer, but he has no ties with the person who turned, who made him a bit, who bit him, who did all the vampire stuff in the first place. And, but he needs, he needs another enforcer to help him complete the change. And on top of that, there's another human, um, companion who is approaching the vampire change, and, um, he's causing some trouble, messing, you know, he's, he's, uh, messing, you know, messing around with, uh, our boy's girl, with, uh, our main character Slim's girlfriend's mind a little bit, because there's a lot of magical mind control going on in here, too, of course, and, um, 
basically, this dude who's messing with his girl, um, belongs anyway. He is the lover of the woman who in fact turned, who in fact is the one responsible for Slim being a vampire. And, um, he ends up, you know, they end up meeting each other and discussing and he's having issues. Uh, his friend is at that point where he needs to go through the spell or whatever to become an enforcer and Slim doesn't want to do it. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't think he can handle it. But she's an, an, an old enforcer. She's been around for a long time. I believe, I'm not sure, but she might be the first or one of the first. I don't remember if they say that. And so she makes a deal with him. He takes care, because she didn't want to turn her companion into a vampire. And so she makes a deal with him. He takes care of her companion, and he'll handle his friend. He'll, she'll help his friend go through the necessary changes if um, Slim deals with her um, distraught um, companion. Because if they don't go through... If if, the, if if you refuse to turn to turn them completely do the little spelly thingy, they start going insane, which is not good. And so basically, uh, Slim pulls off the hunt, easy peasy. Uh, the head vampire of that nest, in fact, takes the um, kind of crazy companion in and helps him turn. Um, his friend ends up becoming an enforcer, and I uh, and I can't remember who's involved, but there's a squabble at the end between various people, and um, um, basically the only reason that nothing bad happened was because there's freaking three enforcers standing right there, and, it, and the vampires are like, yeah, uh, we kind of want to rebel, but we're not going to, because she'll kick our ass. So, peace out, mother trucker. And they bail. And basically, um, Slim and his girl sort out their differences and live happily ever after, you know, just one day knowing that the time will come that she will need to become a vampire and then they can no longer be together. Which is sad, because they make a good couple. She's spunky. He's dark. It, it works. You know. And, um, yeah. That's pretty much the book. I like it. I like it a lot. It's not like your average vampire book, which, depending on what kind of vamp, you know, what kind of books you like in general, and how hardcore you are into vampire books, could be a good thing or a bad thing. I like it, you know, I'm pretty into vampires, generally speaking, but I have a pretty open mind when it comes to them anyway, so, eh, I, I, I like this, I give it, let me see, we need a good grading system, how about fangs, it's a vampire thing, right, fangs, right, yeah, okay, let's go with fangs, alright, high of, from one to, one fang to five fangs, seems like a good space, okay, from one to five, I would give it three fangs. I would give this book three fangs. It was pretty good. I liked it. Okay, and now just like all them, and just like the vampires and the enforcers in this little book here, the sun is coming up, and I am physically incapable. They are physically incapable of being awake during the daylight. They just go out. It's something to do with the magic. So just like them, I'm about to go out, and I will see you all on the next 13th. And remember, the book we will be going over next month is the sequel to this. It's the sequel. Laws of the Blood Partners. All right? I'll have the title in the description. And I'll see you all later. And I'm out in three, two, one. Down.